So this is probably one of the simplest, if not the simplest, mouse trap you can ever make. Everybody's asking, where's uh, Cousin Jack? <laughs> there he is. So I'm up here in a, a nice spot, a good location, where a friend of mine is going to be putting his cabin. And uh, he's the guy that makes the music for my channel. If uh, somebody in the forestry department is watching my, my video, what causes these bulging areas where the bark actually starts to split in the trees? So this is probably one of the simplest, if not the simplest, mouse trap you can ever make. A board for the mouse to come up. And I got hot glue just inside of here. Hot glue on this end so the bottle can't slide very far. And when the mouse comes up the board, steps on this to get the peanut butter, in, in he goes. And it's filled with water up to about here. That way if a rat or a squirrel goes in there, it too will be be caught. As you can see, squirrels have been getting in through a, a hole here in the old woodshed floor. So uh, the couple of houses around the area had a problem with rats and mice. We don't have any rats and mice in the house or around the house. So we'll come out tomorrow and see how this performed. Not sure if you can see the hot glue I have right here and how I tied off the wire. And uh, the, the, the thing to make this roll good is make sure you have an even coat of peanut butter. If you have too much peanut butter in one spot, the heaviest part of the bottle will sit in the bottom and it won't, it won't tend to rock. So that should work. Everybody's asking, where's uh, Cousin Jack? <laughs> there he is. One and only. <laughs> <laughs> we just come up Cool Brook to see where uh, people are going and where they're stopping to, to still go in on Skidoo. You can go in there, like, you know, like, you're not going to hit no rocks or the, the road is, they did a good job grading the road and everything last year. But it uh, looks like uh, right here, we're just past First Hill. Show you there now when uh, we head out. Snow's melting fast. People are going in there on a bike there now. That's where they're. That's where they're stopping here. I'll. Uh, I'll keep it going there and show you when I get up over the hill here. Yeah. A few diehards still at it. That's uh, Cole Brook right down there. Now yesterday I thought there was still some snow here a little bit. But uh, melting fast every day, Jack.
So I'm up here in a, a nice spot, a good location where a friend of mine is going to be putting his cabin. And uh, he's the guy that makes the music for my channel. <laughs> what you got to say there, Jason? Uh, how's it going, Charlie? <laughs> Just digging in my tent. Uh, so we probably got about 14 inches or more. Oh, it's pretty close anyways. Yeah, of, uh, of snow up here, but it's very wet, very heavy snow. Weighing down my tent. Oh, you, you're doing a good job. <laughs> Thanks. I'd offer to help, but I got to hold the camera. <laughs> yeah. If well, I might have to take a few breaks. Hey, I'm, not, I'm not in good shape anymore. It's, it's very important I get the good steady camera work here. <laughs> yeah. you, you want me to do the backside for you? No, and there's a lot back there. But uh, no. Okay, uh, yeah, take a break. <laughs> <laughs> Just look oh, back here. Oh, yeah. Look back here. Yeah, oh yeah, see it all comes off the roof. But it's good that it doesn't stay onto the roof. Yeah, it'll that's she collapses, it collapses and, enough to just to drop it down, right? Yeah. But uh it don't take long for obviously for it to build up along the base and it weighs it down anyways. Yeah, yeah. I think he's gonna have his cabin somewhere there and pointing back towards the hills. And if you take a look at the hills, he's gonna be my next door neighbor. You're gonna be the closest guy to me. Where's the load? I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it makes me feel uncomfortable knowing that you're the one next to me. So. <laughs> and I just met our other neighbor that might be uh, building one of these days. Uh, next Sean. Second, Sean yeah. yeah, yeah. I met him the other day. Oh no, this, this neighborhood's gone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, Sean is in the, uh, the video that I just posted. And I'll, uh, if I can get myself motivated again, Charlie, I'll try to get some more songs for you. Oh, that'd be good. <laughs> yeah. You want to hold the camera for a bit and I'll do a little bit of shoveling? Uh, that's, no, that's uh, okay, sure. Yeah, okay. all right. Here, give her a whirl. You're pointing yeah. that, that's towards me now, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. There we go. Now, let me. Jeez, you know, he said, he said, I got my shovel in here, so I got to shovel out in the. On the skidoo. <laughs> what I should have done is went and got mine. We could have both been digging. Yeah. But then nobody would have been filming, right? That's right. I just don't want to touch the tent too much. Yeah. Yeah, it's fairly durable. I just get most of the weight off the bottom and then. Yeah, that's all I'm going to do let, here. Let it drop down. I'd rather do it like this. That's up against a cot or something. Yeah, I have a cot there, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to just. Shovel back here by the post, go along and let you clean up along the inside. Yeah, no problem. I feel a lot better. I appreciate the help. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. I don't, I, mm -hmm. you know, you don't need to do that. Yeah. Don't kill yourself now. No, 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 geez. Man, oh man, what snow, eh? Oh, there's lots. And where it builds up from the roof too, like the back end here always uh, seems to get a lot more snow gathering up on the base because uh, I guess the wind is blowing it too, right? Yeah. I really don't want to touch fabric there, but it's a good decision to come in here and clean this out. Yeah. You see these pegs? You, you notice like the the pegs sticking out of the ground? Like if you go to your left a tiny bit. Yeah, I got one right here. On yeah. The that those pegs are all, all between four and five feet long and uh there's only two i think that i touched around on and that was on the back side here i mean they're all around which i pegged it all down me and my brother yeah and uh yeah i mean i had to stop before it you know it, it could have kept I, i'm sure it was, must have been six feet or more now his brother is jamie jamie used to get me in trouble in school all the time <laughs> He got you in trouble, eh? He did! <laughs> I don't know if he believes it, but it's true! <laughs> I was such a saint. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see that blue tint in the snow that you're talking about. You see the blue tint? Yeah. When it gets that, now it's going to... It holds a lot, an awful lot of moisture. Right. 
and then it changes the the whole like, fabric of the snow like the grainy kind of almost it goes greeny after that yeah, yeah not long after here you take the camera i'll, I'll start again oh no no gee <laughs> Oh yeah, it's a good call coming here and stuff with this off. Yeah, I'll be tearing it down in the next couple of days now. Anyways, I'll probably take uh, one I load down. Wait much longer past tomorrow. What's that? I wouldn't wait much longer past tomorrow. No. Gosh. I figure two or three days time. Yeah, but you can see the blue, eh? Yeah. It yeah. changes the, the the whole fabric of the snow. It changes the whole. And I don't know. That's when the old fellows used to say, "Now the snow is going to get rotten." Yeah, right. Yeah. And it's uh, yeah, it's uh, you see the difference in it. And like you said, it's almost like uh, the snowman kind of snow there. Yep. Let uh, Jason have another crack at it. Yes. I'm much better cameraman. Yeah, uh, I have no doubt in that. What are you saying? I'm not a good shuffler. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't mean it that way. <laughs> I think that's what he's saying. So uh, I offered help him a guy, and then he slams me like that. Well, you got more experience with the camera. <laughs> well, probably with the shovel too. Yeah. And now he's saying I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my. Uh, you're a little bit older. Not a lot though. No. You went to school with my brother, Jamie. <coughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Let me see. Jamie's birthday is on the 17th of March. Yeah, and yours is the 12th. Yeah. Five days. I'm five days older than Jamie. Right on. Now, Jamie's old, but I'm not. Because, <laughs> uh, you're the youngest, eh? Yeah. It yeah, was Jamie, Myra, Lisa, then you. Yes. Yeah, there's... I'm the youngest by right around six years. So now, uh, did they save the best for last, or was... Uh, of course. Or, or, or was that was after you were born, that's it? They said no more. <laughs> yeah, well... I guess I was the only planned one. <laughs> I guess I had to get something better. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. I'll be leaving in a, a week, so I got to get it down before then. Yeah. I basically had it set up here to, for when we're coming up here clearing uh, the lot. I, I think I did more shoveling and less talking. <laughs> <laughs> that's my excuse to take a break so. <laughs> and if i'm shoveling i can't talk at the same time I, I, i'm breathing too hard <laughs> yeah there's lots of snow back here oh i tell you if uh, somebody in the forestry department is watching my my video what causes these bulging areas where the bark actually starts to split in the trees normally where you find one tree like this not too far from it you'll find another and this one is one of the highest ones that i've seen normally they're between probably about three and five feet or three and four feet maybe down about here somewhere and just kind of wondering what what happens is that the frost getting in into the trees, there's some gum. Huh? Good old gum. Uh, but yeah, I, I got another one back here that I can show you. Before I show you that, I got something else to show you. Pretty neat. And I'm going to put it to, uh, to work this uh, spring when we go salmon fishing, myself and cousin Jack. This is a solar solar powered battery charger all right it's a, it's a battery bank but it's solar powered and it's a 20 
6,800 MHAs. So milliamp hours, I guess. Which, 26,800? That equals out to about 15 and a half GoPro batteries for my Hero 9. So you can see this one here and this one here from where the tree is actually growing is probably only, I don't know, maybe 30 inches up. And it's got that bulge split and bark again, eh? I don't know, I don't know why, why it happens like this. And the other one's only about maybe 14 feet away from it. I'll show you a couple more. So we get a lot of trees growing like this, where you got one main trunk, and then out of it, you have one, two, three, four, five, five trees growing. Kind of neat, eh? And I'll show you a couple other features that I noticed around here. Not really sure why trees will do that, you know? And, and will the cones and everything produced from this one produce trees of similar? Uh, shapes and dimensions, I wonder? Anyway, if somebody in the forestry department can talk about some of these strange features that I see here a lot, I'd be, uh, I'd be, I'd love to hear, I'd love to hear about it. So right now, I'm just going to take you over here and show you a couple more of those bulging bark trees. Ooh, still, still a fair amount of snow here eh, in the woods, eh? So again, right? This one, I guess, it's probably less than a foot, maybe? from the trunk of the tree to where it starts to to bulge out and it splits the bark I don't know if that's frost getting into the tree and then the wind and, and stuff maybe an area that held a lot of sap and sap froze or something I, I have no idea but I'd love to hear if anybody has any idea what causes this defects in trees and like I just said where you find one of these trees you normally find another so if you can look right over here we have another one this one's up a little bit higher maybe maybe three and a half feet but again it's like you get nice smooth bark then you get that broken bark where it just bulges for whatever reason. So did something happen to the tree to cause this? Or is this kind of a natural occurrence that can just happen? Anyways, I thought that was interesting. And I got one more feature to show you guys. And, and I find this in here a lot as well so let me go find a tree that has it and, and it's this it, it really bulges out here but it doesn't split the bark so so to speak and then it takes these big wicked uh, turns eh and there's a lot of trees in and around here that are just like this these are things I often wonder right eh? You can see another one there. And it's not just the, the fir trees. It's also with the, uh, with the birches. So another one there. Another big one here. All right. And it's like this guy wanted to do it twice. So we never got any mice last night in the uh, in that bucket setup. I checked uh, this morning and there was no action. The peanut butter wasn't touched, and no mouse, mice in the bucket. And I find it so strange because 
there are houses up here that are having mice and, and rat problems. Well, knock on wood. Knock on wood. We don't have any, but, uh, you know, every now and then I do go out and I put out a few, uh, few rat traps and, and uh, my, my mice traps. And the last time I set up this bucket um, trap, the first night alone I had four. I think the next night I had something like two or three. Then I went down to one and then, then the mice disappeared from the shed. But it seems like every, every couple of years I got to go out there and get rid of them. But anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. I know it's a kind of a mixed bag, but you got to see Cousin Jack again.